Welcome back guys, in this video we are going to be creating our MySQL variables. And something awesome about SQL Fiddle that I wanted to share with you guys is that when you create something like this, it has a unique identifier. You can see up here in the URL bar, we have this code here. And what you can do is you can take this code, and I'll show you guys, let me open a new tab, and paste that, and wow! it opens up to exactly the same thing. So that means as I code stuff, I can put this uh, little identifier in the description and you can open it and jump right to where I am if you get lost or um, can't seem to figure out what I'm doing. And then you'll be right up to speed with me. So that's really cool. So be sure to check the descriptions for these, including this one to get right where we are right now. For the rest of this video, we are going to focus on the query panel. Let's create some of our own variables. We start with the select command and then we give it a name, let's call it variable one, and we'll give it a value five. The other way is using the select, so we can say variable two. And then we can give it a value using colon equals, hello, make sure I put that as a string. And now let's run this SQL. So as you should have expected, the set did not return anything, but this one did, and it returned the value of the variable, perfect. Now let's just go over uh, a little more in-depth example. Let's create a couple variables. Variable two, we'll assign it the value 10. And then let's create another one. Variable three and assign it the value negative seven. We can reference multiple variables within a select. So let's try select variable one, variable two, and variable three. And now we can see all of our values down here. And we can actually add those together. So let's say we want another column and we're going to say variable one plus variable two plus variable three. Awesome, it seems to be working just fine. Another thing, we can even assign this value to another variable. So we're going to make it variable four colon equals. Let's run that. Yeah, and it's still eight, so everything seems to be working good. And then later, I can reference variable four again. Gotta remember to put my semicolon. Now we get two responses. Eight, eight. Great, so everything's working out. Now let's go over an example of what can happen if you forget this colon. Let's just start from scratch here. Let's say we have a variable, and we're gonna name it ID and give it the value one. And we're going to select everything from the pets table where id is equal to id. Let's run it. Great, so we're getting back this row. And that is the row from this table over here that we want to get. Well, let's say somewhere in our SQL we want to change that id. So we make a select and we put id colon equals two. This should work out just fine. Make sure we put that semicolon and let's run it. Perfect, we are now getting the second row in our table. Well, you could see if we forgot to put this colon and we ran it, the response is still the first row. So that might confuse you if you don't know what you're doing. Another thing, the response from this select here is a zero. What does that mean? Well, this is actually being evaluated as true or false. So we're asking, is ID equal to two? And if it's false, it's gonna return zero. If it's true, it's going to return one. So let's turn this to, let's, uh, let's say we set this to five and we check to see if the ID is equal to five. Let's run it. And the response is one, so it is. And that's awesome here because we can check the value of a variable. But it's not always awesome if we're trying to assign it a value such as 50 and then we get a zero as a return result. That's not what we're expecting. So make sure if you are assigning to use the colon equals. And also, even in set, you can still use a colon equals. And a lot of people will do this just for consistency's sake so they always think colon equals as the assignment. 
that will prevent them from accidentally leaving it out in the select. Just because they know anytime they need to assign a value to a variable, they have to use a colon equals. And then they won't get funky results, which this isn't going to do anything because we're selecting a row that doesn't exist the ID of five. <laughs> Another thing guys I wanted to show you is you can always search things on Google and find the MySQL reference and it is really cool. So here is an example that's very similar to what I showed you where we're creating some variables and then we're selecting those variables and then making an assignment within that. It also talks about using the colon equals and the just the equals and it says how the one without the colon is treated as the comparison operator. But for now, that's all I have to say about variables. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!